What? What's happening? You were so tired, couldn't wait for your face to hit that fragrant pillow. You could barely hold your head up at 9 p.m. Now, you're just rolling around in bed, changing positions, everything so annoyingly sudden. Is it better to cover your feet or leave them uncovered? Should you sleep on your back, front, left, or right side? Ah, oh. There's some moonlight coming through your window, so you take a peek at the other bed in the room. Your friend over there is sleeping so deeply. Asleep after about a minute. So unfair. You're spending the night because tomorrow you're both taking a small trip to a nearby town. Of course, you'll have to get up at 5 a.m. Yay! Oh, and just look at the time now. Why can't you fall asleep? Why? Well, last week you and a couple of friends went camping in the woods. And your struggles were similar. You got very tired after a long day of carrying all your stuff, walking around, preparing food, hours talking by the campfire. Your eyes were half closed. You thought you'd fall asleep in seconds. But then, nothing. Eyes wide open, every little thing bothered you, and no sleeping position was right. So I ask you, why? The first night effect, that's why. That's what you call it when you have sleep struggles in a new place. Sleep is a great thing, but evolution has made it a bit inconvenient for us from time to time. While sleeping, the brain actually shuts off for a couple of hours. That leaves you pretty unprotected. You can't spot any potential danger or defend yourself if something happens. There are animals, like dolphins and whales, that developed a sleeping system where only one part of their brain rests at a time. The other part is awake and ready to roll. We have a somewhat similar thing going on in our heads. Not that there are any dangers in your friend's room. Although, when you think about all that dust under the bed, who knows what's hiding under there? We have certain instincts that showed up a long time ago back when our ancestors lived in caves and knew that if they slept like there was no tomorrow, there might not be. That's why they also knew it wasn't safe to sleep outside their cave. That's most of the reason behind this first night effect thing. If you sleep in your own bed, in a room you feel comfortable in, your brain is like, phew, okay, you're safe now. But if you go to a new place, Nothing helps, not even a comfy bed, a silky pillow, or the fact that you're at your good friend's place. Your brain knows you're far away from your cave, so it can't relax and let you fully fall asleep. It's a little bit like with dolphins. One part of our brain is resting, but the other is carefully listening in case something unpredictable happens. Your brain won't bother you with this half the brain is sleeping and half not thing forever. When you spend two nights in a row in the same place, your brain is more likely to think, whew, it's safe here after all. Although that pile of dust still kind of worries me, and it'll probably let you fall asleep. Now, the first night effect is not that serious if you only experience it occasionally. But if you change locations really often, you could spend most of your time tired, unproductive, or facing some other issues. Our brain has some patterns that evolution gave it, but luckily, it's also quite flexible. You can trick it and help yourself overcome the first night effect. Since your brain is afraid of the fact that you're in an unknown space, you can make it more familiar and show your brain everything's okay. You might bring something you like with you. Maybe your favorite pajamas, your pillow, that soft blanket you wouldn't change for the world. Do you usually drink warm milk before going to sleep? Do the same thing at your new place. Help your brain recognize it's time to relax. Go to sleep at the same time you usually do. Have some exercise rituals before bed? Yeah, me neither. But whatever routine you have before going to sleep, do it at this new place too. If you're booking a room at a hotel, try to find one that has a bed similar to the one you have at home. If you usually sleep in a double bed, it may feel weird sprawled out in a king size. Or just bring along your favorite pajamas, it's cheaper. Nothing you do is guaranteed to help, but it's worth a shot. Side note, don't you get annoyed when you meet someone who can just sleep anywhere? It feels really, really great to lie down, tuck yourself under a warm pile of blankets, and... (sighs) Oops, sorry. Mm. 
Anyway, sleep's important. We literally need it to survive, just like we need food or water. We spend around one-third of our lives sleeping. Scientists still don't know all the reasons why we sleep, but here's what they've got so far. We sleep to store energy. Eight hours of good sleep can produce enough energy for us to have an energetic, productive day. Our body needs to restore itself while sleeping. Hair and nails grow. Muscles repair themselves. All that and more happens while you sleep. No effort needed. Then there's brain function. If you put a book under your pillow during the night hoping your brain will somehow read it and be prepared for tomorrow's final, not gonna happen. But if you study hard and take in a lot of facts, a good night's sleep can definitely help you remember everything. A brown bat sleeps almost 20 hours a day, while a giraffe only sleeps a tiny bit, usually in many 5-minute power naps. That poor giraffe doesn't know what it's missing. Cats definitely know how to enjoy life. They spend two-thirds of their life sleeping. Randy Gardner set the record for the longest period without sleep in 1964. He was 17 when he stayed awake for 11 days or 264 hours. Do not try this at home or anywhere. Peter Powers decided to set the opposite record and stayed asleep for eight days straight. Ah, that's awesome. How come he didn't have to get up to use the bathroom? If you lie down in bed and fall asleep almost immediately, that means you're really, really tired and sleep-deprived. Ideally, it should take you around 10 to 15 minutes to fall asleep. There are two specific times each day we feel really tired. 2 a.m. and 2 p.m. That's when we feel like taking a nap after lunch instead of getting on with our work. Show this video to your boss next time you're caught snoring in the office after your lunch break. We're actually the only mammals that delay sleep on purpose. Mm, and obviously the least cool mammals ever. Back in the day, only 15% of people dreamt in color. Now, 75% of us do that. Some folks think it's because our TVs are in color nowadays. Speaking of, we spend around 2 hours in dreamland every night. But if you want to remember your dreams, you should write them down right after you wake up. Wait too long and you'll forget all those awesome superpowers you had. Over the course of an average night, you might change sleeping positions around 20 times. Your favorite position can say a lot about your character. Lying on your back with your arms up by the pillow is called the starfish position. This type of sleeper tends to be a good listener and a selfless person who likes to help others. Also, this sleeper might let their guard down more easily. Then there's the free-faller position, where you're on your stomach with your hands up by the pillow and your head turned to the side. Some say these sleepers don't take criticism well and tend to be pretty direct. Finally, the yearner is when you lie on your side with both of your arms stretched out in front of you. This type of sleeper is a bit complex, but also very open-minded. They're slow to make a decision, but they stick to it once it's made. Now, the kind and style of the jammies you wear to bed also says a lot, but we'll save that one for another video. <laughs>